The Audi TT, to me, it's one of the best looking cars from the early 2000s. I think this actually, if you just update a couple of features to it, it could be a car from 2023. It was first unveiled in 1995 as a concept. They needed to do a couple of changes to the concept, even though the concept looked pretty much exactly like this. Then it went into production in 1999 and continued in production up until 2006. So what we're going to do in this video is obviously talk about this beautiful design that is the Audi TT. We're going to start in the front end, walk around to the side and the rear, have a look at the interior, and then we're going to take it for a drive. First of all, thanks to European Auto House for providing this Audi TT for me to review for you guys. I'm going to link it down in the description. Before we jump into the design, let's talk about some of the basic spec and tech for this Audi TT. So you have a 1.8 liter turbo four cylinder, 180 horsepower, 174 pound feet of torque, zero to 16, 7.3 seconds with a top speed of 140 miles per hour. Fuel economy sits at about 18 city, 21 highway. And the base price for the Audi TT back in 2000, was about $30,000. So the Audi TT, where does the name TT actually come from? So before Audi was Audi, they were named NSU. And NSU used to race a lot of bikes over at Isle of Man in a race called the Tourist Trophy. And Tourist Trophy later turned into the name TT for this specific model. What I love about the front end of this is just look how everything in the body sits flush with the rest of the surfaces in this car. The headlight follows the exact same surfacing as the body. There are no chamfers to house the headlights and this creates a very flush looking front end and also in the rear which you're going to have a look. It's almost a symmetrical looking car looking at it from a side view. Usually that's not a good thing but in this case it looks fantastic. One thing that's really interesting about this design, since we have this flush curved entire front end, well, that means that Audi couldn't exactly put a standard looking bumper onto this thing. And that's why this is one of the few cars of the early, late 90s, early 2000s that doesn't really have a bumper in it. And I think it looks really cool not having it there. And there are only a few lines on here that create some sort of flow in the design and some sort of sharpness. We have this line in the hood, for example, going in and cutting down all the way and then continuing into this piece. So we have a line for going from the bottom all the way up over the hood and into the windshield. I've always loved the headlight design of the Audi TT, not just how it sits flush with the body, but also the internal assembly of this. We have this black piece housing these light bulbs inside. We also have this light strip at the bottom. One of the very first cars to have an LED indicator was the Audi TT. You can see that right here. So this wasn't just a, an innovative design. It was also innovative when it comes to technology. Now, to me, the most interesting view for the Audi TT is definitely the side view for a couple of reasons. So let's start with reason number one, and that is the cut lines on this car. To me, it feels like the designers and the engineers, they worked close together on this design because if you look at the cut lines here, they actually follow some of the line flow and the lines of the car overall. For example, this cut line in the door then goes in to the lower part right here and we have this nice solid side skirt that doesn't look too aggressive, but still it fits the overall design of the car and specifically these wide fenders that we have over the wheel arches. But have a look at this piece right here. This is what I'm talking about. It follow the cut line of the hood follows the big fender that we have in the front end. Another very unique design feature when you look at the Audi TT from a side view is that if you cut, if you, if you, for example, if I stand right here in the middle and you look at the rear, you look at the front, they're almost symmetrical. And what that makes, what that should make for a car is it would make it look pretty static. But in this case, for some reason, the genius designers of Audi has managed to add some dynamic features into this, even though the front end looks pretty much exactly identical as the rear. Speaking of cut lines following the shape of the graphic features of the car, have a look at the cut line that goes right here over this uh, wide fender. It creates the end point for the tail light, and the same thing is going on in the front. And can we just take a minute to talk about these wheels? The Audi wheels of this era, they were very special to me because when I was growing up, the Audi was really a, a cool brand. I remember the first time I saw the RS4 and the S3, the first generations, they just blew my mind. And a lot of that 
had to do with the wheels. I love this simple wheel design. I'm really glad that this specific TT didn't switch up the wheels because these to me are a big part of the design of this car. A funny experience you can, you can make with the Audi TT just to show you how symmetrical the front and the rear is. If you were to take this rear end, you switch these tail out out to the headlights and you remove this and you put a grill back here, you're instantly gonna have the front end of the Audi TT. That's how symmetrical this design is. But let's go in a little bit further and talk about the rear end of the Audi TT. Same thing like we have in the front. Since they are pretty much identical, we still have a flush body in the rear with this big curvature. But you can see that there is something that kind of breaks this curvature that the Audi designers so desperately wanted around the entire car. And that is this spoiler right here. So the reason why this sits here, even though the designers absolutely did not want to put a spoiler onto this car, is that when this car first came out in 1999, there were reports of some unexpected accident at high speeds. The Audi took the car back and they tested it in wind tunnels and they noticed that at high speed, the rear end, the entire rear end of the car seems to lift and you don't, you lost control, specifically when you're switching lanes at high speeds. And that caused a lot of very severe accidents. So Audi had to recall the Audi TT from the very first year and since that production year they always added this spoiler onto the back to add stability to the rear. With the Audi being all symmetrical and everything from the front to rear in the cut if cut it in the middle of course it's going to be symmetrical from side to side there is something missing on this TT right here and if you look down here we only have one exhaust pipe so the Audi TT came in two different versions you had the same 1.8 liter turbocharged engine you had it tuned to either 225 horsepower or 180 horsepower horsepower and this if you want to know which one you're looking at look down here at the uh, diffuser section if it's one tailpipe like we have right here that means that you're looking at the 180 horsepower version if you have nicely symmetrical tailpipe which I wish this had this is kind of annoying to look at this because otherwise the car is so symmetrical but if you have two that means that you have the 225 horsepower version one detail I absolutely love in the rear end is the design of this fuel cap and this this feels like it might be plastic but it definitely looks like it is made of metal and very racing inspired and when you want to open this from the inside it really pops up quite violently and it's really interesting to see and hear that noise when it pops up welcome to the inside of that 2001 Audi TT and this brings me back to a simpler time Without 50 screens and 72 settings for the suspension, this is all about driving. We have this Audi TT plastic, it looks metal, but it looks really cool. Underneath here you have stereo and we still have a cassette player in 2001. I don't know if ever anyone is ever gonna use that again. Down here we have the settings for the climate control, very simple, very easy to use, intuitive. And down here, of course, we have the five speed manual transmission. It feels not as good as some of the recent manuals I've driven, this feels a little bit spongier than that, but it's still a very cool, cool to have it in manual. And you have a pretty decent side glove box with some different compartments inside, they're very cool. And up here you have the controls for the heated seats, you have the uh, traction control on and off. I guess you wanna keep that on, but now we have the spoiler back there, so we might be fine at high speeds, I'm not sure. And we have these vents, so look at the design of these vents and the bezel that goes outside of it. Does this remind you of something? It definitely reminds me of the fuel cap that we just looked at in the back very cool done when I was a kid I thought or when I was younger I thought these were some thing of some part of suspension going on up here because it looks like a spring I now realize that they are designed to kind of look like funnels for the air vents shooting out the gauge cluster same thing there super simple we have four round dials for the fuel the temp the the speed and the tachometer with a nice almost completely rounded housing for it and looking at the doors we continue this industrial look with this pattern of the door handles for example pretty industrial looking doors more so when they added this type type of texture to the features that they have here the door handle and the attachments for the door handle as well and as you can see this is the convertible version if I were to pick one of these I think this is one of these cars that actually looks just as good as convertible as it does in the coupe version version but I've never really been a huge fan of convertible so if I were to buy this car I would try to look for a manual 225 horsepower with the symmetrical dual exhaust that's missing in this car because I were, if I were to buy the 180 version every time I look at the rear 
I would be a little bit annoyed. Looking down here, we have the uh, buttons for the trunk, we have the buttons for the fuel cap, and we have a button in the middle that looks like a car with some Wi-Fi coming out of the roof. Let's fire it up and let's listen to this 180 horsepower four-cylinder with a single exhaust. Alright guys, we're driving the Audi TT. This is a 2001 and as I said, it's the smaller, lesser tuned engine. So we have 180 horsepower in this one. I'm not expecting it to be super quick. It definitely sounds good. These 1.8 liter turbos, I don't know how long Volkswagen Group had those into in production, but it was for a very, very long time and I guess for a good reason, super reliable, and you could tune them pretty easily. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Feels like more like a uh, Riviera cruiser car than a sports car, but still, there is some power to this. Cars back in the day, they didn't weigh a lot, and I think that was a big, reason why you could have less power and uh, make it feel faster. There is a little bit of a turbo lag, which I don't mind. It's kind of normal to have in these cars. Around 3000 RPM or 3500, something like that, you can feel that it's pulling a little harder after that. Very nice to be driving an Audi TT. I mean, I feel like I'm riding around in a, honestly, a design icon because this was so such so ahead of its time when it came out. It looked so futuristic. And then you had a bunch of movies, Hollywood big, big block movies, taking this car and turning them into concept that was inspired by this car. For example, I think it was iRobot or something like that that had a, Audi that was inspired by the TT. So definitely, if you were to just upgrade the uh, graphics of this car, I think you could make it into uh, something that would look like a 2023 car. Now, would I buy this car? Probably not for one simple reason, and that is that it's not the 220 horsepower version, and I can't stand having a diffuser with just one exhaust pipe when you can see that the diffuser was designed to have two in there, it was just annoying me too much, but I would definitely buy an Audi TT, not as a sports car, but more so like a cruiser to just have some fun and not be stressed out when you're driving it on the weekends. 